All right, on this week's episode of Talking Tobacco, we will discuss a little bit of the recent weather events and some of the damage that has incurred to the uh, 2017 tobacco crop. So as you can see, we're here in Edgecombe County. Uh, we are standing in a field of tobacco that is adjacent to a drainage ditch. Uh, we estimate that they had about six to six and a half inches of rain uh, this past Monday and Tuesday. Uh, the total time of the rainfall event was a little more than 30 hours. So, you know, it was a very saturating, very heavy rainfall. And as a result, this drainage ditch overflowed, washed out anywhere from four to about 10 rows of tobacco, uh, pretty much making this unusable. So the big topic for this week is what do we do now? Uh, many farmers, both conventional and organic, have started to question whether or not a leaching adjustment for fertilizer needs to be made. We've written two posts uh, for our tobacco portal and the simple answer is yes, we seriously need to consider making a leaching adjustment for both nitrogen and potassium. And uh, consider, when we think about potassium, uh, consider our soil type and if we need to adjust for sulfur and potentially magnesium as well, we can do that with some of our potassium sources. Our rule of thumb, uh, as of right now, uh, if, if growers receive more than two inches of rainfall, we probably need to add back 100% of the nitrogen and potassium uh, that were applied up front. Um, and typically that's about a one-to-one -one ratio. If we're less than two inches, we're probably looking at about a 50% replacement of nitrogen with uh, intensive fuel monitoring after this point. Um, we want to be a little bit conservative with those low, lower rainfall amounts and realize that as we approach lay-by or maybe even two to three weeks from now, uh, after we make these nitrogen applications, we can always come back and add a little bit more. Uh, again, and just monitor the status of these plants. If we see them showing a, a pale yellow color from the bottom, uh, on those bottom leaves into the top, uh, with the top being a little bit dark green, you know, that could be a sign of a nitrogen deficiency. And again, we can make an adjustment if need be. The second point we wanna talk about is what fertilizer sources do we wanna use? I'm a big proponent of thinking only about nitrogen and potassium. Uh, so when we talk about nitrogen sources for right now, obviously we've put a lot of money into this crop. We really don't want to spend a lot more. So now we're talking about some of our liquid nitrogen formulations that tend to be a little bit cheaper uh, per pound of nitrogen than some of our grain formulations. So 32, 30, 28% UAN, 24S, thing I like about those is they're typically nitrogen only materials. Uh, they may have a trace amount of sulfur. Again, not a problem, something that's probably needed. On the flip side, when we think about potassium, we're looking at a KMAG op option uh, 0022, which would be uh, sulfate of potash, magnesium, um, or we go back to 0050, just straight sulfate of potash. If I'm on a deep sandy soil, you know, with a with a sand profile that's greater than uh, than uh, 12 inches in depth, I might think about something like 0022, getting some K-Mag there where we can replace some of that magnesium. Uh, if I'm in a little bit shallower topsoil, something with less than maybe 10 or 12 inches to clay, then I might think about something like potassium sulfate. Either way, at the end of the day, um, I feel that most growers are gonna be replacing somewhere between 20 and 40 pounds of nitrogen and at that one-to-one -one ratio that was mentioned earlier, that would be about 20 to 40 pounds of potassium as well. And again, depending on uh, potassium source, uh, you could have 20 to 40 pounds of sulfur or possibly maybe 10 to 20 pounds of sulfur that is replaced. So again, these are the considerations we need to make. Uh, we've got time, fortunately, with the way this rainfall occurred and with it being so early in the growing season, it's a pretty obvious choice uh, in terms of what we need to do to correct this problem. Very unusual rainfall event. Um, I think some of the feedback that I've received from growers uh, and extension agents has been, this has been very similar to Hurricane Matthew. So record flooding, record rainfall amounts, uh, very long duration in terms of, of how long it took the rain to fall, to occur. Um, so again, a very saturating uh, rainfall where a lot of our nutrients have been removed from the soil profile. So again, 
it, it's sort of surprising that we need to add back nearly all of what has been applied, uh, but it makes a, a little bit of sense when we think about how unusual this scenario has been. The, the third part I want to talk about, again, goes back to nutrient source. We do not recommend that, that phosphorus be included in this uh, fertilizer leaching adjustment. Phosphorus is not very leachable, uh, and most of these soils have ample supply of phosphorus as it is. Uh, so let's let's hold off on that. Let's focus on the nitrogen, the potassium, maybe the sulfur, maybe the magnesium, and then we'll go from there. But again, we can be successful. This starts us off on the wrong foot, but we've got a lot of season ahead of us. And I fully believe that we will overcome this and we will be fine at the end of the day. So again, those are our recommendations for this week. I uh, certainly encourage you to take a look at our, our two posts from this week uh, from the Field Agronomy Notes number eight and number nine. Regarding some of the comments I made today, and there's also some pictures and other graphs there to, uh, to look at. Um, but again, uh, again, I, I think we can really, really do something with this. So until next time, keep that pride in tobacco.